Today, we will be talking about the Chris Sills and Leslie drama. Let's get into this video. Behind closed doors because I think just certain things don't need to be said on the internet. Some things should be kept in private and not everybody needs to know your ins and outs of everything. But given the circumstances and how everyone is caught by surprise of how I moved and what I did, um, I figure it's only right that I share with you guys what happened, why things are the way they are. So I guess she's about to talk about what led to her breakup with Chris and how she got back with her ex. Remember when I was living with my ex, Chris had reached out to me one time and asked me how I was doing, everything, if everything was okay. Just checking on me, it was so random. He wrote to me randomly, I think he did that twice. If I'm not mistaken, or if it was one time, I don't remember. So, she was with her ex, and she was messaging Chris back whenever he um tried to conversate with her. You don't find that suspicious? You don't... But I was with my ex at that time. He asked me how I was doing, and my ex seen that conversation. Um, And Chris was just asking me how I was doing, and that was pretty much it. And then when... Me and Josue broke up. I was like, you know what? Let me hit up Chris. Maybe we can link out here in Orlando. We can record some videos or whatever. And that's how that happened. We started talking. He's like, oh, you could collaborate now. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So, in other words, Chris was a rebound. And she did it just to get back at Jose, Josue, whatever his name is. It's a good move for the both of us. And this will be fun. Oh, or not but I told him I said I'm scared that being and I just got out of a relationship and I am vulnerable I'm scared that I fall for you or I like start loving you and I start wanting to be with you and I know that I'm not in the headspace to be in a relationship Leslie were you scared or were you manipulating him were you saying that just to get him to fall in love with you because a scared person is not gonna travel all the way down to Texas He's like, don't worry about none of that. Don't think about that. If, things ha if that happens, then let that happen on its own. But don't think about that. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to force you into anything or whatever. He made me feel super comfortable. And my heart was still heavy. And I was still thinking. And I was still so scared that I was going to fall for him because I was vulnerable. In other words, she was still in love with Jose Josue. And I had just gotten out of a relationship. And um, I was just afraid. I was just afraid that my walls wasn't up. I was afraid that I wasn't strong enough to be with another man and not get my feelings involved. I was, I was just, the whole idea of being with somebody else for a long time, because I know what it is to be with someone for a long time, I was scared. But he um, made me feel secure and made me feel comfortable. With that being said, um, I end up making that move and I go to Texas and I still went for the whole month. I think that was the month of November and we was just bangers after bangers and posting videos and posting videos. We were super productive. Yeah, look at how she's smiling when she talk about her. Body language tells it all and this man has really done nothing to her. And it was a great month together, everything was going good. Um, I think where things started getting complicated when we mix business with pleasure. I feel like that was the biggest fallout. I feel like I should have never opened up that door and I should never, uh, I should just stood my ground and stood strong and not be weak by temptations or whatever the case may be. You never mix business with pleasure because feelings get involved and people start falling for each other. I remember other. feeling so alone in Texas. I even told my friend, I said, I I feel more alone here than in my own apartment and I live by myself. Like, I'm with Chris here and it's like... I so you felt so alone, but you kept coming back for more. You don't find that suspicious? I feel so lonely. I don't like this feeling. And I, I remember telling him, like, I don't deserve to be feeling like this for something so petty. It's not cool. Like, I'm out here by myself. 
I don't have my own car. I can't move freely around in Texas. This is not where I'm from. And I'm here at your convenience. So don't make me feel that way. I mean, four days in the house and not saying one word to each other, not even looking at each other. It was, and then it was over something so petty. So, so, so petty that it didn't even make sense. And I was just like, why is he acting like this? I mean, he will go to the bed and turn over and not talk to me, not look at me. And it's not that I did something wrong. It would be, for example, um, I had asked him, I think he mentioned this in his video. I asked him about um, him inviting someone to the studio with him. And the reason why I had asked him about it was because I was staying with him in the house. Every time you get jealous, you have an excuse. Just admit you were jealous. That's all, sis. And there was a night that I didn't go with him to the studio and he went by himself. I didn't feel like going, I don't know why. But I didn't go, I stood home. And that made me ask him, like, did you really? Invite somebody to the studio when I didn't go. And the only reason why I asked that was because at that point we was already um, intimate. And I wasn't, I would never be okay with me staying in someone's house and he's dipping and over there trying to sleep with somebody else at a studio. So that's why I asked him that. I was like, he did not just try to play me while I'm in the house and he's inviting someone to the studio. But that uh, studio, I'm ready to go. He was like, what are you talking about? He starts getting loud and he's like, I didn't invite nobody. Look at the, the message. He shows me the messages. And from what it looked like, he wasn't talking to her or inviting her to the studio. He even called her in front of me and I told him, don't do that. You don't have to do that. He called her in front of me and she's like, oh no, I haven't spoken to you, whatever. So that shut me down. But in that conversation, he was like, you're not even my girl. So don't ask me no questions about no girl, no nothing. And I was like, oh, okay. Copy, heard you, note it. I won't ask. Copy, heard you, note it, meaning that if he keep messing up, I'm going back to my ex. If there was a potential relationship, I knew that that's something that I wasn't going to want to deal with. Someone not talking to me for three days and not being able to communicate with me. Like, I can't do that. It's just so dramatic. It was petty. It was unnecessary. But it happened a few times. And I started realizing that when someone plays the victim, they'll lash out so that you don't question them anymore about certain things. You don't ask them certain questions that they don't want to be asked. But when they ask you a question, they expect an answer. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if I'm right, but maybe I feel like that is a tactic one has when they don't want to answer a question or they just want to get away with what they want to get away with. They don't want, they want you to learn it. You know what? Don't ask me no questions. If you keep asking me questions, this is what I'm going to do to you. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to treat you like shit. Not treat me like shit, like physically or talk to me bad or whatever. So you heard it from her mouth. He did not physically abuse her. But, you know, not talk to me. And I didn't like that. I felt like that was a tactic that I put on to and I didn't appreciate it. And then things started escalating. Emotions started to build up and then name calling started happening. But sometimes it would just come out of my mouth like, you acting like this, you acting like that. Like, why are you acting like that? That doesn't make sense. So she started name calling first. It got toxic. The night that I booked my flight to Las Vegas, to Los Angeles, I was talking to my girlfriend who I hadn't seen in a really long time. And she's like, you should come, you should come. And at that moment, I was like, yeah, I need, I need to get out of here. I wanna go, I need, I need some time apart from his space and from being in Texas. I was always in Texas. I kept flying to Texas. I was sitting there for a really long time. Barely even sit in my house. This is the longest I've been in my house. So, and, nothing my girlfriend invited me and she was like come come 
And I was like, sure, let me go. And I stayed with my girlfriend for my whole trip. I was with her. She's very much involved in the music industry. So we was at the studio. So she left Texas to get away from Chris. And that prank idea came from Chris. Was the prank called Jeremiah? So let's knock that out there. Because I know people are in the comments like, oh, she probably did do this. She probably did do that. Yada, yada, yada. This is why it becomes toxic. This and that. But that was Chris's idea. After the prank call, you randomly go to Jeremiah's state. You don't find that suspicious? You don't. When I was a Cali, Chris had called me and he was like, did you do this with him? Did you do that? And I was like, no, Chris, I didn't. Then he was upset that everybody was making it more than what it was and i too was upset i was like oh my god this is ridiculous because it was like me moving innocently bites me in the ass no matter what because it's like i'm not supposed to do anything i can't do i can't be seen here i can't be seen there so because i'm tied on to something that i'm really really not tied on to i'm really not in a relationship so it sucks how you gotta move a certain way now you know because you're exposing your life to social media but I know my, my conscience is clean. I don't have a, I'm not guilty. Guilty, 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 guilty. Unfollow him and follow all those dudes that you unfollow, that you follow that they're with the game or whatever. Mind you, these are older men. Older men are some of the biggest creeps. No offense to the older men out there. I'm talking about the grimy ones. And none of them disrespected me. None of them came out their mouth and violated me or always being fresh or tried anything with me they were being so genuine i felt like i was networking with people and i met nice genuine people so to please him and for him not to think anything of it like if i cared that much about some dudes i unfollowed them and honestly i didn't want to do that i didn't want to do that because I shouldn't have to. I didn't do anything wrong. No one is is being disrespectful to me. No one is trying to get in my pants like he's justifying. That's why he wanted me to follow them. It was none of that. I didn't get those vibes. I'm a grown woman. I know when a guy does that. I And I can handle that myself. You don't have to handle that for me. No one does. You're right. You didn't do anything wrong in that situation. Um. So anyway... I ended up unfollowing them, which I shouldn't have because I gave him more than an inch of controlling me, of controlling me when he's not even my man. He posted shout for shout out, whatever. When I saw that, I was like, oh, this is different. I've never seen him do that before. And then... I noticed that he started, he was following like 19, like 19 practically naked girls. One of my friends called it only fan girls. Just admit it, you were a little hurt and you didn't tell him how you really felt. So I noticed that and I was like, in my head I was like, he could do whatever he wants on his Instagram. This is Instagram, he could follow whoever he wants. I just found it very weird that he was only following a whole bunch of naked girls. And in my mind, I started to think about how he pressed me the night before about who I was following. So in my head, I'm thinking, did he just press me yesterday night so that I don't have to question him about what he did today? Like, you know, what he did that present day? About him following those girls or whatever. And I said, it does make sense. I mean, you guys let me know. If I'm, if I'm thinking too hard, maybe I'm thinking too hard. Maybe I'm digging too deep into things. No, I feel like he did it to be petty. He wanted you to feel how he felt when he saw you following those dudes. And he wanted you to say something to him, but you didn't say anything. So he felt like you didn't really care about him. So that made him even more matter. But I feel like a lot of men out there not just Chris I feel like a lot of men justify their actions with almost anything and everything and they will try to put it on you so that they're the victim isn't that what you're doing now 
we're talking about you and Jose Josue going out to Hawaii. But you're talking about Chris and what all he did wrong. But Chris praised you. And they could get away with it. So in my mind, I'm like, I can't believe he pressed me last night about some nonsense about me following people. And when we've had these conversations about it, honestly, I didn't say nothing to him about it at all. I know people were like finding it weird and people were telling me like, oh, you look stupid, Leslie. And it, it didn't make me feel some type of way that he posted another girl on his story because it's like, Bro, we're working together. You're making me look weird. You're making me look stupid right now. Like, why did you have to do that? I, I get it's a shout for shout out, but to start off with shout for shout out, there has to be some kind of dialogue there. I know there was a communication there that I don't know what happened. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Nor does it really matter. Just admit it. You had feelings for the guy, but you still had feelings for your ex, and you thought maybe you and your ex could get back together, which y'all did. That's why you didn't want to get into a fully committed relationship. Instagram, I went through my followers, and the, the two guy friends that I met in California, I refollowed them because they were still following me. And I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with me following them because I never did nothing with them. They never tried me funny. They never tried me or disrespected me or we never had a conversation like that for that matter. Nothing. I was like, you know what? I mean, if Chris is going to follow whoever he wants to follow, why can I not follow who I want to follow? So it was kind of one of those things. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just follow him. And it was very nonchalant. I didn't do it maliciously. I didn't do it to get back at him. I didn't do it to piss him off or anything like that. Guilty, 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 guilty. I just did it because it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be me telling you who to follow because I didn't. I never told him not to follow those people. I never said, why did you follow them? I didn't do none of that. You probably didn't tell him that, but... Your heart is saying otherwise. You really didn't want him following those people and posting that girl. So I was like, if I'm not doing that to him, he shouldn't do that to me. I should have never, I should have never um, gave him the right to even try to control what I do on social media. So anyway, I followed my my two guy friends back, and I'm calling them my friends, and I just met them, Patty, but we really clicked. Those guys are super cool. So, um, I followed them back, I was laying in my bed, chilling, um, scrolling through my feed, and I know I realized that Chris stopped following me, Chris unfollowed me, he unfollowed me, and I think then he blocked me. I was wondering, like, is he doing this for some attention, is he doing this so that we can spark up a conversation because we haven't spoken all day about nothing, like, is... Like, is he, is he doing this for some attention? I didn't initially think it was because I followed those guys back. Leslie, you are a smart girl. You know why that man didn't follow you. But it pissed me off because I was like, why would he unfollow me knowing that people watch our Instagram? Social media is crazy and people are going to assume things. Like, why would he do that? So... I got up from my bed and I came to the living room. I was like, Chris, why did you unfollow me? And he was like, oh, because you lied to me about how you was feeling this morning. I was like, what do you mean I was lying to you? Like I said, he wanted Leslie to feel some type of way about him posting the girl, but she didn't. She acted like she didn't care, so that's what made him mad. Even though she cared, she didn't say anything. She just followed the dudes. Like I said, both of them was being petty. Petty, 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 petty. He was like, oh, because you feel some type of way. Of, you a little, little, like. He said, you feel some type of way about who I was following, whatever, and the, the girl that I posted. And I was like, that's why you don't follow me? That doesn't make sense. That's Chris. retarded. Why would you do that? Kept going back and forth. And then he finally starts to say, oh, you're following dudes that I told you not to follow. And I said, what? What type of form of manipulation, controlling? At the end of it all, I feel like Chris fell for Leslie, and Leslie had feelings for him as well, but she still had feelings for her ex, and there was a lack of communication, and a lot of jealousy, and business with pleasure is a no-no. I feel like they were definitely in a relationship, but it was not committed. 
and that's it um let me know what you think in the comments don't forget to like comment and subscribe until next time bye bye